Hi everyone, in this video I am going to teach you about an amazing add-on called Brisk. Now Brisk is a Google Chrome add-on that you can get in the Chrome store and you just add it right onto your browser and then when you go into say Google Docs it will immediately pop up here right down here at the very bottom right. But uh, Brisk is, uh, is it's a really awesome tool. I'm super impressed with it so far. Um, there is a free version, there is a paid version. Right now, the one that I'm demoing on like a seven day trial is the like school plan version. So if you look at this here, there's a lot that you can do on the, on the free plan. I have kind of been trying out the more advanced one because there's some different things that I'm really interested in right now in terms of like the targeted feedback and the use of rubrics and different things like that. So some of the things I'll be showing you today are free. And then some of the things I'll be showing to you are on the paid version, but really excited about this, this tool so far. So you can, like I said, download it to Chrome. And so that way it shows up here at the right. And then on the bottom right of your, you know, whatever app that you're using. And when you click on it, you'll see that it pops up right here. You'll see that I am on that trial. What I have here is just like an essay that I pulled from actually Google Bard and just had create for me for the sake of this video. Um, and you could have it create other things if you wanted it to. But a couple of things that I found that were pretty cool is that you could have it inspect the writing. So you could do like a detect AI writing to see, obviously, like how likely it is, um, whether or not it is AI, which this is spot on because I totally got it from Google Bard. So that tool is pretty cool. You can change the level of the writing. So let's say that I have some students that are reading at a lower grade level and I need it to, you know, just kind of be brought down for them based upon their ability. So think, you know, students that are, are learning English or are maybe receiving special services, this could be a helpful tool um, for you with them to be able to accommodate and modify. So I could just choose what grade I want this to be changed from. You can see right now it's saying 13th grade reading level, which is kind of weird. Um, but I'll click on this. What it does is create another document and it will immediately start to generate a new version of it based upon that reading level. So what you can see is that it's automatically creating it. It's pulling from this other doc right here that's already created and creating a new one at a lower grade level to hopefully make it easier for students to read. Um, once you get there, you can see that there's other things that you can do. You could have it translate it to other languages. You could ask it to make it shorter, make it longer, add more detail, less detail. Um, so I could choose, let's make it a little bit shorter. So now it's going to kind of regenerate it and it's going to make it shorter than it was previously. I could ask other things if I wanted it to change, like add different details or add this quote to it. Um, you could then ask it to create like a lesson for you. So let's say I want now a lesson plan and I want it in English and I want it to be at a seventh grade level for about 50 minutes. And then I am going to come in and choose the standards for California. And maybe I specifically want them to cover this standard. And then I'm going to have it create a lesson plan for me. Now, obviously this is great and you should go in and, you know, read it, make sure it sounds good, make sure it does what you want it to do and think of it as like a good baseline, right? Um, it should be something that you use to create like your framework and then you go in and you add your details. But as you can see, it's immediately creating all these different ideas and lesson plans for you to choose from, but minute by minute. And I'm thinking like if you're a newer teacher and you need help with adding that structure, this could be a super great tool for you to start to learn some structure before you kind of start diving out more on your own creativity. Um, you could then have it even create different worksheets. You could have it create a quiz. Um, there are some really cool things that I like with the quiz option. So let's say 
that you want it. And I'm actually going to probably pull out of this one and go back to my original one that I have here. But let's say that I wanted to have a quiz created based upon this. Um, I could click create. And like you saw already, you could create a lesson plan. But the DOK questions and the quiz options, I think, are just amazing to bring up that rigor in the classroom. So let's say that I want to start with just doing some DOK questions. And maybe I want to have a variety of questions to ask students based upon all levels. So let's say create a question for, and let's hope that I can spell, for each, oh my goodness, DOK level. Then I'm going to choose brisket, which that kind of makes me think about the food. Does anybody else keep thinking brisket? Uh, maybe it's just me. So you can see it created another document here, and now it's breaking down and creating questions based upon each DOK level. So DOK one, here's four questions from that article that are really just that simple recall. And then it works up to those higher levels. And what I like about this is it's so hard to create some of those higher DOK questions um, because they're harder and I think it takes a lot of time. So how nice would it be to be able to pull these questions and tweak them and change them however you want to, but at least like the heavy lifting of it is already done. Um, and to teach students kind of how to work up to those higher levels of thinking. And you could even take this and put it into a quiz. Um, or if you don't want it this way, um, I like how this is kind of structured because then you could pull what you want. But if you wanted something more quickly, you can actually come in and have it create a quiz. And when you do that, you can have it do multiple choice questions, short responses, long responses. Um, so I'll show you a little bit of each. So let's do a multiple choice. We'll just do five questions. Um, you can still see that from earlier. I had that tagged on the standard for English. So we'll just continue on with that. So I'm going to say create a five question quiz. It's going to give me the choice to put it into docs or forms. So I'm just going to put it into doc for now, um, but you can create a Google form, which is really cool as well. Again, choose brisket. And then you're going to see that it starts creating those questions for you. So it will create those five multiple choice questions real quickly. And it would do the same thing in a Google form too. So right here, you can see that it was immediately created. Again, you should be going in, making sure that, you know, this is what you want it to be adding in that depth and that rigor, but it just did a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Now you can even come in and do some long response answers, which I like a lot because we need to get students, you know, writing more in class in our classes and thinking at that higher level, but I could choose a long response. Maybe I just want two questions out of that. So create two long response questions at DOK level three or higher. Let's hit next and let's see what happens. I haven't done it that specific before. So you can see it's starting to create it. Question number one, it seems like it's taking some time. There we go. Um, so you can see that it's definitely giving um, some higher level questions here. So here are two questions and then there should be some sort of student response, right? Um, again, I love the ease of being able to create those higher level questions without too much heavy lifting on our part. All you have to go in and do at this point is see if that's really hitting the content um, that you had in mind and if it's really hitting those standards that you wanted the students to learn. But what a great kind of framework or baseline to start from. Now, one other thing that I really want to show that I was super impressed with was its ability to give feedback. So going back to this original essay, I can choose the give feedback option. 
And uh, there's four different things that they have here that you know you can give feedback on. But the targeted one is the one that I really, really, really liked. So let's look at targeted. And right now I have a writing rubric that is attached. It's our school like writing rubric for our side of town that all our feeder schools share um, from elementary to high school. So I'm just gonna say, give feedback based on this rubric. So like I said, I attached my own rubric here. Uh, I still have it on seventh grade. And then I'm gonna choose brisket and watch what it does here. It will start to give specific feedback based upon the rubric because the rubric that I attached, one of the sections is called, is about purpose, right? Um, you can see that it is giving specific feedback right there. And then I can choose whether or not I wanna keep that one. And then it goes down to the next sections. So another part of my rubric was about evidence and elaboration. It's looking at this, it's giving some feedback and then giving some advice of what to do next. Okay, and as you can see, it just continues to go on. Now, again, is it important that we go back and we read and we check that this makes sense? Absolutely, yes. But what a great way to provide some quick feedback for students. Um, because I think sometimes the whole essay writing process is just such a long process that we can shy away from it because it's just absolutely so time consuming as an educator. So think about if this can do, again, some of that heavy lifting for you and you can start having different conversations with students based upon that feedback. You're able to give them more feedback more quickly. Um, I could see the ability to do more essays and more you know, higher DOK writing throughout the year could happen more often. So if I like all of those things, I can just hit comment and add all of these comments in here. Again, all of these headings right here are based upon the headings of the rubric that I attached. So you can see that it's all there. And then if I wanted to and added, wanted to add a different type of feedback, there are a couple of other options here as well in the give feedback. Um, you can change it from targeted to like glow and grow. Um, you could do some more things with different rubrics and based upon that criteria. Um, so I'll just kind of show you guys this one real quick. This one's the rubric criteria. And what you'll see is that it starts pulling those headings from my rubric and it puts it in here for you to copy and paste it wherever you would want to place it. Um, so you can see that it's breaking down each section based upon that rubric and giving advice. It's not giving it a grade. It's not saying it's like a one, two, three, or four, but at least it's giving the students somewhere to go. Okay, so another one in terms of feedback that could be helpful um, is the glow and grow. So this one's very simple. And what it does is it will give feedback based upon what is amazing. So it glows, what is an area for growth? And then there's another section and I'm totally blanking on what it is, but I'm sure it'll pop up in a moment. Um, but it does give basically what are the things that are really good? Um, what are the things that need some growth? And then wondering, that's the last section. What are some things um, to wonder? And that might kind of adjust the essay as we go on. So you could copy it all. You could even just choose to like insert it here at the end. So I could just go down to this next page and choose to insert it. And well, it didn't insert it exactly where I thought it was gonna go, but you can see it kind of creates it into a little table thing and you could move it around. So that is a quick overview of Brisk. Um, again, some of the features that I showed are the free ones and some are paid, but I do find this tool to be uh, really impressive so far and just super excited to see how this could be used in a classroom setting. If you have any questions, please let me know.